guys, welcome back. I'm going to show you how to play Gwen today. Um, it's an AP split pusher, similar to champions like Fiora and Jax, except for the fact that she deals magic damage. So if you have a lot of physical damage on your team, like we have right now, and you also need something that destroys tanks with a lot of maximum health damage as well as true damage, then Gwen might be the champion for you. So the passive makes her attack steal bonus damage, and then you also heal for some of the damage that you deal to enemy champions. Your E is a dash that gives you uh, bonus damage, it's an auto attack reset, gives you a lot of attack speed, and bonus attack range as well. Um, so it's an ability that can make you pretty strong the one. Also because like if you manage to attack someone after you use that E, then you also get some of that cooldown refunded. So it can make Gwen really strong the one guy, so definitely look to abuse that if you win that little one fight. And now we have the Q says so the scissor thingy. Um, so she's gonna snip when you press your Q and the amount of time she does that stacks up with the passive here so you can see those bars stacking up when I auto attack someone and now we have a fully stacked passive and that's going to make it so our Q deals a lot more damage. If you hit people in the center of that Q then it's going to deal true damage. So now we have fully stacked passive and then you combine that with your E for the gap closer and you can see that's going to deal a ton of damage. The goal on Gwen here is that you stack up the passive by auto attacking minions and then we have fully stacked up and then you just queue the enemy champion and then if you win the extended fight you can keep going otherwise you just back off. It's a late game skilling champion, keep that in mind so you don't have to force stuff in the early game. Also make sure that you use your E as an auto attack reset so before you use it get one auto attack off and then you can use that E. That's some extra damage that comes out really fast as well. And your W, um, so it's gonna put down a zone that gives you bonus armor and magic resistance and for anyone who's standing outside that zone guys, that's going to make it so you're untargetable. Be careful though that your Q is actually pretty easy to dodge. Um, that's why you kind of want to use your um, E to like reposition it so you make sure that you actually hit people in the center. Because if you don't, then you're going to lose the true damage part. Luckily we hit this guy, so his passive is down. We're against the Garand, so we want to make sure that, you know, we constantly keep his passive down. Otherwise, he's just going to heal back up. But this is how you want to play Gwen, is that you play around the passive that's going to stack up every single time or auto attack something. And the final slip, snip on that Q, guys, is the one that deals the most amount of damage. So you want to make sure that you actually hit people with the final one. And also make sure that you hit them in the center. Oh, he survived with like 1 HP, that's really unfortunate. But it does happen, actually, way more than it should. He also has Ignite up and he can do his flash Q. Um, so he needs to watch out for that. He's probably waiting to do that as well. I can sense it coming in. So use Ghost and Gwen. And the reason you do that is because like it's a champion that struggles a bit, you know, gap closing and stuff, um, similar to Darius. She doesn't really have any reliable CC, um, she only has it on ultimate, like a slow. And she has that dash, but in order for her stuff to work, she has to be on top of an enemy champion. And she can't really do that without the ghost up, so that's why this um, summoner spell is a lot better than flash. Similar to Darius, uh, these champions absolutely need ghost in order for them to stick to the targets. They almost got level 6, um, so this ultimate actually helps with the all-in stuff. Um, so how it works is that she's gonna throw needles, so the first one you are able to use freely and it's gonna proc the passive as well. And in order to use the second and third one, you have to attack something. So it doesn't matter if it's a minion or an enemy champion, as long as you're able to attack something, then you can use the second one, and then you have to be able to attack something again in order to use the last one. And the last cast is going to throw out five needles, so that's of course a lot more damage. So you want to make sure in a fight that you actually get all of those ultimate stacks off. Oh, there's some invading business going on down there in our jungle. So now we got the ultimate up finally, and it is showtime. Garen also has this up. So your W guys is actually what makes Gwen really really strong in fights because like um, as long as you make sure that every other target is not standing in your W, they're not able to aim at you. 
because you are gonna become untargetable. Um, so any skill shots and stuff they throw at you, they just, it's just gonna fly straight past you. And at the same time, the W also gives you a lot of resistances, uh, meaning that you don't only have to use it to like evade stuff, but also like in an all-in, because you do get a lot of armor and magic resistance. This guy's playing it pretty passive, so it's a scaling champion, so if you can get away with playing it passive and just farming up, then that's all you want. Now this Garen is actually really far behind in CS because he just stays back the entire game. You can see, um, if you can use that ultimate and you get all those stacks off, that's insane amount of damage and not only that, you also heal for a lot. Remember that your ultimate also procs that passive, so it's going to heal you as well. This guy going for me. I do have the W up soon, so we can go for it if he comes. But it's fine, we can just go ahead and recall. There's a champion super super strong in extended fights, you know, in fights where she gets to use a fully stack Q and hit people with the ultimate and also heal up with that passive. Just gonna head back to lane here. We got this one because it gives a lot of um Mixed stats, AP, HP, and also Omnivamp, and this item helps you a lot in extended fights, makes you deal a lot more damage as well. So this is exactly the mythic item that this champion needs. Remember, you had to auto attack something or you had to hit them with a Q in order for you to use the second and third um, cast of your ultimate. So just stack up the passive again. You can see the passive bar stacking up and then the fully stack bar. It's gonna make you deal a ton of damage. Now it's a Garen will ignite, so we have to uh, respect that, even though he's not playing it um, correctly. You don't need to do that on the Garen, anyways. Like he has ignite up, so if you have a low HP, he just flashes Qs and then kills us with the alts. So we don't want none of that. We're gonna try to keep his passive down whenever possible. You can see, whenever we have that ultimate up, that's when I'm looking for the all-in. You want to make sure that the opponent is not able to dodge the ultimates, um, because it also slows like your ultimate, every cast of it. And that's of course super important, because otherwise you're not able to get close. So when you combine that slow with the ghost that we have here with the summoner spell, then it becomes really hard to escape you. And I can use that E to push down the towers a lot faster, auto attack, and then immediately E. A lot more damage off and then of course your Q deals bonus damage to low HP minions so it helps you push it down faster as well. Always make sure that you hit people in the center of their Q guys otherwise a lot of damage will be lost because it is not true damage. So we'll just go ahead and reset. Starting building towards this item here. We're gonna have enough gold for it on the next recall. I'll just hit back to lane. So this champion spikes at level 6 if you play her with Ignite. Otherwise the Rift Mega and the Nicest Tooth combo. Which actually gives you an insane spike. Um, Gwen is something you want to pick against tanks. Um, she does really well into tanks because as I said, maximum health damage and then on attacks as well as true damage. That is something tanks really hate playing against. So Gwen is the ultimate counter to tanks as well. Which becomes even better if you need magic damage. Like, if you have a full AD team and you need some magic damage in the top lane, then Gwen is the champion that you can pick up. We don't see other people on the map, so I'm just gonna get some vision down. Our jungle is doing the Herald, that's fine. Getting some ward down here. So that cane is not that strong right now, so we might be able to go for a 1 versus 2. Again, it is risky, it is a high high risk, high reward play. But there's no reason for us to risk anything right now, because we are ahead. You take risks when you're behind, not when you're ahead. So 
The Adobe does not block out tower shots, but it can block out everything else. Um, just make sure people are not inside the zone. It's only going to block out stuff for people who are staying outside of the Adobe zone. This guy is not trying to fight us anymore. We're gonna heal up pretty nicely because of the passive and this component right here, so it's of course awesome to have some sustain as well. Just keeping that passive down. Always remember that the last snip is the one that deals the most amount of damage, as you can see. Because it's especially important that you try to hit with that one. We might be able to dive him here. Um, again, it is risky. We don't need to take any risks. Attack the tower. Oh, not quite enough damage, unfortunately. But you can see, you can also, you can hit any target and that ultimate is going to come up. It does not have to be a champion or a minion. As long as you can attack something, then the second cast and the third cast will be available. Well, we send this guy away from lane, and now there's another low HP target. I don't know if this guy has his ultimate up. So I don't think we want to risk anything, so I'm just gonna peace out. And we're gonna go ahead and get the mythic item on Gwen. Rhythmaker is the item to go for. Even if you're not against tanks, guys, it gives you so much damage in extended fights. And then we're also getting the armor boots because they have a lot of AD. AD top lane, AD jungle, and then AD carry as well. And we don't really care about the mages because like if they have to stay, you know, far away in order to damage us, our W is going to get the job done because it's going to like block out everything anyways. So stack up the passive on Gwen by auto attacking the minions. And then when you have fully stacked passive, then you EQ forward or QE forward, depending on what's best in that case, get the damage off. And if you can win the extended fight, then you just keep going. Otherwise you back off and then wait for your cooldowns again. And that's how you like slowly poke down the target and then you can all in um, when possible, when you need your ultimate or when the target is low HP and you can just run them down. Bring out the vision so this guy cannot step up anymore. Okay, the Ari is coming up. And the Kane too. We can go for this. I don't think they want to fight this though. Ah, uh, this is pretty interesting. That is ridiculous amount of damage and also healing. Um, that's the power of the Rift Maker and your passive as well. You can see I'm always trying to like aim my stuff, so that slow helps me make it easier for me to land the Qs. So try to like combine your ultimate with your Q, especially if the target's mobile, because then that slow might actually end up helping you um, a lot. First hour down, uh, mid game started pretty much at this point. You want to be split pushing as much as possible, because that's why she's best. She can also team fight with a W, but split pushing is a lot better. Like it's way better. That's kind of the point with those um, champions like the um, Fiora, Jax, and Gwen. Um, you want to spend as much time as possible in the sidelines because they can destroy people in one versus ones, one versus twos, one versus threes, and so on. And they're not that strong in team fights. They can do well, but they are not made for team fighting. The objective is to be split pushing, so that's what you want to focus on. Just gonna keep pushing. And then we can go ahead and reset, cause we are sitting on a lot of gold. So next item, the Nicious Tooth. Because it's gonna amplify the damage that you deal with auto attacks, gives you a lot of attack speed and AP as well, which are perfect stats for Gwen. So this is another core item. 
So these are the two items you get every single game and then the rest is situational that you build depending on the enemy team composition. So if you need anti-healing then you get the Immoral Nomicon. Um, if you need the Sonya's Hourglass active then of course you can get that item as well. Um, that's another item that you will get most of, your t uh, most of your games but it is not absolutely necessary compared to these two items like the Nashas and the Rift Mega. Taking up that Q passive, and then we can use that to wait clear with. You can see as we get more ability haste, you know, and more points into our abilities than that E cooldown, you can actually keep it up permanently. So before before that E expires, your E is going to be ready again. So in an all-in fight, you can keep this ability up permanent. There's a lot of healing we're getting right here, and that's the reason we also ended up surviving. Um, do not underestimate the amount of healing that you get from the passive. We can take down the tower, but we don't want to take the inhibitor just yet. Because that's just gonna give the opponents free farm. Oh yo yo, okay. I did not expect that. He's dead though, it's fine. I did not want to give the shot down to the AD carry though. Oh, that's the dead graves too. Yeah, I think we should just have backed off right there. That was a bit too greedy. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and sell the Dawn String, and then we got the Nashas. So this is the big spike that you're playing for normally. Like if you're in a matchup where you cannot do much in the laning phase, now you should be able to when you have these items. Still don't like to group though. I want to spend as much time as possible in the side lanes. Uh, because that's where she's strongest, so that's what we want to take advantage of. But sometimes you can group up, especially when the objective is coming up here. Like the dragons, then you can try to group up. And how you play her is that you want to try to like isolate one target and then you put down your W so the AD carry and the others cannot hit you. And then you want to um, kill the target before your W expires. Uh, unfortunately, she it out, but it's fine. So we're gonna secure the dragon, that's all we wanted to. Otherwise, these guys would end up getting the free um, objective bounty as well. That's why Ghost is so good, is that if you don't have it, people are just gonna kite you around. Like, she's gonna destroy people if she can get on top of them, but if not, they're just gonna perma kite you, uh, similar to like playing Darius. Even though you have the damage, if you're not able to get within melee range, it's useless. So that's why Ghost comes in. I'm not gonna go for the Rift Herald. I should probably have taken it early on because it's gonna disappear soon. But it's like the first Rift Herald, the OP one. The second one is kinda meh because like no tower plates left, so it's kinda pointless. We need the ultimate off to pull off stuff like this. And the good thing is that they're stacking armor. Armor items, and that's good for me because we deal magic damage. Right. He was actually still kind of fast though, even though we had that ripoff proc on him. But yeah, we got a flash down. We just keep pushing it out. And then we can go ahead and reset. Nothing else for us to do top lane. I'm gonna get the Seekers here. Because they have a lot of AD heavy uh, champions and it helps us stay alive for longer. Um, I don't think we're going to die anymore. Maybe if we go ham, but Sonya's Hourglass is another really important item. It's not core item, but it's still super important. An enemy has been slain. Because you're playing a melee champion that has to be straight in the middle of the fight. So use everything you have and then you pop the active to like buy yourself some time. And then when your abilities come back up. You go ham again. So just stay in the silence. Keep pushing it out, force multiple people to come, and then hopefully your teammates might be able to do stuff elsewhere. Let's 
push it out. That's a fight going on in the mid lane. I'm just gonna keep pushing. Nice. Our team is doing great this game. That's nice. So just keep pushing it out. Just split push all game. And then when you want to group, you do that when the objectives are up. When you have something to fight for. This Tristan is actually pretty random. Like, the moment she appears. Unfortunately, I was not able to use my stuff because I got silenced, so I should run it down again. I could have killed both if I was able to put down my W, but I got silenced, so I was not able to use the abilities. This is just like popping out from nowhere that I don't expect. But then again, she does have true damage for the Kraken Slayer, so... Sonya's Hourglass is going to help me out a lot um, to survive cases like this. So actually, I want to go bot right now because the Baron is up. But I'm playing here with Ignite, so even if there's a, like a fight starting, then I will not be able to help them. But I'm still going to go mid and bot side. Akshan is going top, so that's fine. I'll just keep pushing it mid. This Garan should be done, so... Oh, Graves also dead. Ripperonis. So just keep pushing mid here. Oh, that's some weird claim. And that's why the Sonyas comes in, you know? You can pull off stuff like this and then if they have some high damaging abilities, you just pop that exit and bam. You're gonna survive, and then you can re-engage. That's why Sunless Hourglass is another important item. So it's a good thing I went for the stopwatch instead of the um, Amptom. But yeah, you can assassinate AD carries, but you have to make sure that you're able to like constantly auto attack them, so you can get multiple ultimate procs off. Oh, they're not able to finish off. Unlucky. Hopefully they don't die for this. But yeah, be really patient with your W and only use it when you really need it because it actually has a pretty high cooldown. So you can only use it once in the fight. I don't have the ultimate up. Ooh, I got ignited. That's the Garan Ignite coming in. That's a bit too ham. I'm gonna go and hopefully take away the rip off. Re engaging, okay. Let's go for it. Nice, there we go. And a nice quadra kill on the graves. We just go and go for the end now. Let's see, we have. Uh, I'm not sure if we can make it actually because we don't have a wave. Somebody has to tank so the minion does not die. Alright, that should be it, guys. So, that was how to play Gwen. I hope this was helpful. As always, thanks for watching and see you all next time.